Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to what I hope is going to be the first installment of a long-running series on my channel of reviewing and kind of batches the best short fiction I have read in the past month. Quick backstory before I get into talking about my September favorites in short fiction. I am reading a lot more short stories, novelettes, and novellas in science fiction and fantasy than I ever used to before because I really want to be able to nominate in all of the short fiction slots for the Hugo Awards. If you are aware of the controversy that has surrounded the Hugo Awards for the last two years, you probably know why I feel compelled to do this, but I feel like I nominate but I could become a more responsible nominator by nominating actual short fiction and not just novels and some other things that I, I listen to, like podcasts. So the, the problem, of course, is that there is a ton of short fiction out there. There are so many magazines and online subscriptions and stuff. There are so many venues that short fiction is being published in, in SFF. You can read stories all day long and still only find a handful that you really, really love. So I'm gonna be reading a lot of short fiction. I don't want to dump it all in my weekly wrap-ups because they're, they're already long videos. I don't need to be making them any longer than they currently are. But also, I'm not interested in talking about short fiction that I just didn't like or that I was lukewarm kind of met about. I only wanna talk about things that I feel strongly about, that I really love, that I would recommend, and that I consider, uh, well, Hugo nomination worthy, I guess. I kinda of hope that this will help other people who um, would like to read more short fiction, but find it frustrating to find the good stories. In September, I read a bunch of short fiction, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the four that I enjoyed the most and that I definitely recommend people read. First is A Year and a Day in Old Theridane by Scott Lynch. This has been reprinted in issue five of Uncanny Magazine, but it was originally published in 2014 in the Rogues Anthology edited by George R. R. Martin and Gardner Duzois. This story is set in the fantasy city of Theridane, where wizards are fighting each other and making life miserable for everybody else with the magical fallout. A few years ago, the wizards moved into the city and cracked down on the thieves and con artists, and a woman named Amarel and the band of thieves that she ran had to disband and retire to save themselves. But one day, after being very, very frustrated from that magical fallout from wizards fighting each other, Amarel gets massively drunk and then curses out one of those pesky wizards and said wizard retaliates by blackmailing her into doing a job, coming out of retirement and doing a job on the sly, which is that she has a year and a day to steal an entire street. Amaryl has to get all of her buddies together and out of retirement for one last heist, or maybe it won't be the last heist. And it is awesome. This story just has a wonderful, vibrant, and colorful language in it. If you've read any of Lynch's Gentleman Bastards books, and you, you know what his writing style is like. He just goes all out with a very colorful language. He's got some very inventive, descriptive phrases that make his writing so fun. And I feel like not only is this story fun to read, I really hope that Lynch enjoyed himself while he was writing it because it is hilarious and wonderful. I am actually not a big fan of Scott Lynch's novels. I thought that The Lies of Locke Malamora was okay. I'm not continuing with the series right now, but I really feel like um, his plot and his uh, style really blossoms under the length restriction of a shorter story. It just, it all comes together. You get that description and these extravagant details, but it doesn't overwhelm you because, you know, the story has to end. There's going to be a definite ending. It's not a long, drawn-out series. And I think that's why I like the story so much. A side note here, this story, almost all of the main characters are women, and they are excellent, well-done, entertaining women. Two of them are married, so there are lesbians in the story, and I really liked how they were portrayed as well. So if you kind of want feminist, maybe queer-friendly 
short fiction, short fantasy fiction, then try this story. Next is an older story that I ran across called All That Touches the Air by An Owoimoyela. I hope I'm saying that right. This is from issue 11 of Lightspeed Magazine from 2011. In this story, humans have colonized a planet and discovered an alien sentient life form called the Vosth. And they have this treaty that says that anything that touches the air outside of the humans' buildings belong to the Vost, which are like parasites. Humans have to wear protective suits outside all the time because if they don't, the Vost will immediately take over their bodies, kill them, and then basically reanimate them. The main character of the story witnesses as a child the punishment and death of a man who is given up to the air and the aliens to just execute him. There are extenuating circumstances for this, but it is a very traumatic experience for her, and she spends many years after this constantly wearing a protective suit, even inside of the buildings where she's supposed to be safe. And then one day, the reanimated zombie-like corpse of this man who was killed when she was young comes back and the aliens want to speak to her. I thought this was a very well-written story that portrays how alien and weird other life forms can be and the misunderstandings between humans and aliens. It also has some really creepy elements because you kind of, I mean, seriously, reanimated corpses walking around with aliens speaking out of their mouths. It was creepy. I wouldn't want to watch a movie version of this. It would just be too scary for me. I think what I like the most is the psychological response of the character to this traumatic event and how it shapes her. There's some really interesting conversations between her and this other supposedly younger, annoying person um, who's kind of championing the Voss and is like, oh, we should get to know them better. And our main character, who isn't named, is always like, no, they're scary. How could you possibly want to have anything to do with them? So I really like this tug and pull. I'm not so sure that I really understand or like the ending necessarily, but it's really a, a good science fiction story. The next story that I want to talk about is actually a novella by Lois McMaster Bujold called Penrix Demon. This is not available for free online. Uh, you have to pay for it. It is kind of, I guess, like self-published. I will leave the link to the Kindle version on Amazon down below. I really recommend reading this if you want to try Bujold's fantasy because this novella is set in the Chalian world, in the world of the five gods, which I think is what Bujold is going to call this series from now on. Chronologically, it is set before the events, uh, maybe hundreds of years before the Curse of Chalion and the Paladin of Souls. The quick version is that demons come from one of the gods of this world called the Bastard, and they possess human bodies as like a shield so that they don't get sucked back to whence they came. And they give their hosts... Uh, magical powers. Um, they can override their human hosts and take control and at that point. You want to get rid of them, but a strong, powerful, um, like, dedicate of the gods can kind of reach an equilibrium with the demon inside of them and use the, the demonic magical powers to do good in the world. So this young country bumpkin is a kind of a lordling named Penric is on his way to his engagement with a young woman when he runs across a woman dying of a heart attack on the side of the road surrounded by all of her attendants. He's very nice. He stops. He wants to help. The woman dies and her demon pops out and possesses Penric. This demon, however, was intended to be transferred to another person who was trained to deal with the demon. Nobody really knows what to do with Penric. He's not useful. They don't think he's useful and they want to get the demon out of him, but he starts to befriend the demon inside of him. And this is why I love this story. It is pretty simple, but it is very well written. And the main character's goodness and naivete and innocence are actually rewarded because he doesn't have any preconceived ideas about how he should talk to or treat or view this demon. He sees her as 
something he can work with. Like, he sympathizes with her, he wants to know more about her, and he treats her in a way that she seems to have never been treated before. So even though he doesn't have training to protect himself against being completely and utterly possessed, they reach kind of an equilibrium. And I really liked reading about that and seeing Penrick demonstrate to the people around him who are very skeptical. He shows them that, no, you can do things in a different way. I'm gonna repeat this ad nauseum. Bujold is a very, very good writer, and she's already demonstrated to me that she can write novellas very well. There are a bunch of novellas that fill in the chronology of the Vorkosigan series, which is her science fiction series, and those stories are, I think, essential. They're always well written. Many of them have been nominated or have won Hugo Awards, and they really contribute to the Vorkosigan series, and I'm really excited that she might be doing more novellas for her fantasy series for the world of the five gods, because if Penrick Steeman is, is any example of what might come in the future, I am just going to be a really, really happy Bujold fan. The fourth and final story that I want to talk about is actually a novelette. It is Mountain by Lu Sishin, the author of The Three-Body Problem, which won the Hugo Award this year. This novelette is translated by Holger Nam, and it was published in issue 76 of Apex Magazine. In this story, a man named Feng Fan is blamed for the deaths of four of his fellow mountaineers in an accident, and he punishes himself by never looking at mountains again. Again, he takes a position as a geological engineer on a ship in the middle of the ocean, and then one day, when a massive alien ship appears in geosynchronous orbit around the planet, he gets a chance to once more climb a mountain, and he gets to talk to some aliens about the bubble world that they came from and mountain climbing. There is a great quote from the story that I want to share with you. It is the nature of intelligent life to climb mountains. They all want to stand on ever higher ground to gaze ever farther into the distance. And that is what this story is about underneath all of the scientific technical mumbo jumbo. This is a really cool exploration of scientific ideas, things like how would the uh, behaviors of air, atmosphere, water, and people change when environmental constants are changed, and how could alien life view and develop their own field of physics if they evolved inside of a planet instead of on its surface. There are some really interesting descriptive passages in the story that describe how things change when gravitational forces are changed or, in, or new gravitational forces are introduced, like how water behaves. I just thought it was beautiful to read some of those parts. Lou does most of his info dumping in dialogue in the story, which leads to some very stilted, odd sounding dialogue. It is not what English speakers are probably used to. I think this is probably just a cultural difference between Chinese science fiction, Chinese uh, fiction and what we expect from English stories instead, or Western fiction. So I tried to get beyond that. I'm starting, after getting through the three-body problem, I kind of view it as just being different rather than bad or wrong. And I think that whether you do the same thing may um, help you with liking the story more. So this isn't going to be for everybody, but if you like hard science fiction and you want to read translated fiction as well, this story, Mountain, is a really good one. And those are all of my favorite stories that I read in the month of September. I hope to do this again in October. If you've read any of these stories or if you want to read any of them, please comment down below. I'm also taking suggestions, so if there's anything you've read, hopefully published in 2015, that you think I should try out, please let me know that as well, and I'll be back again soonish with another video. Bye!